two sides of a coin. I never thought it would be possible for a face you loved to be the same face that you hated. When my dreams and nightmares melted into one, all I could do was hope that the light would win over the darkness. When I met him, I thought he had the kindest eyes. Even though he was very shy, he knew the answers that the teacher wanted but he kept quiet. I knew this because I could see into his book. We locked eyes for the first time and I felt a little spike. I did not think about him again until later when I saw him on the field playing football and acting like the most confident person in the world. Andrew, Letitia was asking about you. Some guy said, gosh, I hope you did not tell her that I am here. He laughed. Never. But she is cute though, his friend said. Not with those roles she is not. He smirked. He gave his group of friends high fives and they all laughed. While my heart sank, he was a bully and that comment about the girl made me see him as a two-faced person. It erased the boy who helped me when my books fell earlier that day and talked to me about Stephen King while walking me to the next class. He had complimented my dressing which people had been making fun of all day. It was already the first day, but I was already getting comments about my sexuality. It seemed that the bullies remained the same wherever I went. It was worse because I had transferred a few months into senior year. I tried to leave without being noticed, but his steely eyes met mine. I waved to seem friendly, but he looked at me like he had never seen me before. Hey you, what are you looking at? In love with me or something? He asked. His friends burst out laughing. I tell you, they let in everyone these days. This school is the dumps. One of the guys scoffed. I turned away and swallowed the lump that had built up in my throat. Just another bully who pretended to be decent but once he was with his fellow friends, he showed who he really was. It was only in class the next day when I found myself sitting next to him again that he spoke to me. Hey, he said and looked down. So, you want to talk to me now? I asked. Um, I am sorry. What are you talking about? He avoided looking at me. Was I dealing with someone who had multiple personalities? Well, this was a new caliber of a bully. One who played mind games. Yesterday, I saw you with the football team. I explained. You must be talking about my twin brother Andrew. I am Owen. He explained. Ooh, I am sorry. I laughed nervously. Well, I do not accept your apology. He said with a straight face. Before I could speak, he laughed almost musically. What I meant was that I can only forgive you if you come with me to this comic book convention on Saturday. He asked. Of course. And that was the day I became best friends with him. It was also the day that I became the bane of Andrew's existence. He would pass rude comments to me when I was passing by which I would do my best to ignore. Soon, his friends joined in. They tripped me when I was passing and pinched me when the teachers were not looking. I got fed up and asked him to leave me alone as I would form a complaint against him, but that only seemed to spur him on, and the bullying only got worse. I hated the sight of him, while my heart skipped a beat when I saw his brother, who was the opposite of him. Once I got past his shyness, he was very quirky and funny. He did not get along with his brother. They had been intolerant of each other for several years now. He would usually come over to my place on weeknights and we would work on projects, read books together or just talk. I started to develop a crush on him but I was unsure what his sexuality was. He seemed oblivious to romance of any sort, leading me to believe that he just did not like dating. I was confused about my feelings for him because his brother was making my life a living hell. I was now doing his assignments for him and falling behind in class, but then Owen would lift my mood after his brother ruined it. He was always around my house and soon my parents knew him as my best friend. There was a bit of flirtation involved between us which evolved over several months but I was afraid to make a move. It was one night when we were texting and I was telling him how bored I was, that he walked to my house. I could not believe it when I looked out the window and saw him. I climbed out and we sat in the tree overlooking the house. What happened to you? You were never this rebellious. I laughed. I missed you, he said. I saw you on Friday. I laughed. Truth is Andrew had a party at home and I could not even hear myself think with all that noise. He explained. So, you thought I would be better company? I teased. You definitely are. He leaned in close and gave me a light peck, but immediately backed away. I pulled him back to me and there we were, kissing a tree. I fell hard for him. My emotions had little to no hold on gravity. He was my sanctuary in the mad world that was high school, and I looked forward to every moment with him. The next morning, he asked to take me somewhere. He took me to an old ship harbor that no one went to, which was where we had our first date. We bought some fries from some vendors and bonded while watching the sea. He asked me to go out with him but we had to keep it between us because no one knew that he was gay. His parents would probably not accept it and his brother was a massive homophobe who made my life a living hell, but there was an appeal to loving someone with no one knowing, like when we would sneak into each other's rooms and cuddle at night. I knew every inch of his room by the end of the month, and Andrew had no idea I was in love with Owen. They might have been twins, 
but I could tell them apart. It was mainly to do with the eyes. Andrew had icy eyes and Owen had warm ones. I took his virginity when we had been dating for three months. I had relationships with guys since I was 14 so I lost mine ages ago. For two people who were thought of as boring we sure did have a lot of chemistry. We even sneaked into the janitor's closet once during a pep rally. It was so thrilling but scary at the same time. We told each other everything. And I mean everything. I had lodged many complaints with the head of discipline, Mrs. Peters, but none of them had been investigated. It seemed that Andrew's influence was everywhere. He believed that he was untouchable. One afternoon, he took things too far. It was the first time that he physically assaulted me. I refused to give him my bag, which had the assignment I was planning to hand in. He punched me in the stomach, and I coughed up blood because he hit me on the kidney. I had to cancel my date with Owen over that, saying that I was sick. He wanted to come over but I insisted that I looked terrible. He still came over anyways and when he saw me, he was horrified. Andrew, it is too much now, he sighed. Yeah, he wanted my assignment when I refused. He made me give it. He got up and I saw so much anger in his eyes that he scared me. And for a moment he looked just like his brother. I'm going to wipe him off the face of this earth. He clenched his fist and was about to leave. But I called for him. You told me that you are scared because your family would never believe you. He is your father's favorite child. You do not have to protect me. I am fine, I said, wincing at the never-ending pain. But I feel so useless, hearing him say that stuff every day and seeing how he treats you. His eyes became glazed. Your love heals all that. I said, you know, he used to pee his bed until he was 16. He suddenly said, what? I laughed. That is not even the worst thing. He continued telling me embarrassing stuff about Andrew and I laughed so hard that I ended up in even more pain. To be honest, Owen was the only sane person in the family. His whole family was crazy, and they hid some of the biggest secrets. He would tell me every crazy thing that they did. I knew that his father was running for mayor, but he had a mistress that his mother knew of. She was a kleptomaniac despite having a lot of money, and his father covered it up. Ooh, I do not think I told you this big secret about Andrew. His eyes suddenly lit up. He is secretly an alien. No, dummy, this is so big. And I found out by accident, he said. Then in a hushed tone, he told me the secret. And trust me, it was very juicy. It was a secret that could ruin lives. Everything he told me was always in confidence, and in return I offered him emotional support. He believed that I was the person who kept him sane, while his family drove him mad. They treated him like he did not exist while his brother was the one who could do no wrong. He once told me that everything he told me was not even the worst thing about his family, and if he told me more, I would be in danger. I believed him. If his parents could bring up someone as evil as Andrew, then there was something off about them. A few days afterward, the school seemed to be buzzing with a secret. When I passed people, they snickered and gave me the strangest looks. But this time, I could hear mine and Andrew's names together. I did not have any friends other than Owen but he was not in class that day. I had completely forgotten about how strangely the other students were acting when someone slammed me into a locker so fast that I felt the air leave my lungs. Andrew was pissed off and hurling abuse at me. It was the angriest he had ever been, and each blow rained down on me while I could not do anything. Some people pulled him away from me, and finally, I could stand up. Chuck, one of his so-called friends, said something that shocked me. A simple squabble with your boyfriend. Andrew, look I saw you kissing him. You've been fooling us all along. Are you shacking up with the homo? He asked. A few people laughed and some started calling Andrew names. I looked into his eyes, and I could have sworn that I saw a look of sadness pass through. They had been bullying him. Andrew, I... I started to explain, but he stopped me. What is it with your obsession with me? Why are you spreading rumors that you are with me? He spat. Andrew, I did not. I tried to explain. I did not want to out his brother in front of everyone, and it seemed that no one could put two brain cells together and figure out that Owen was the guy I was with. You really think that I would get together with you? You gay people are crawling with STDs. He said, everyone gasped. His laughter was stopped by a fist meeting his mouth. He collapsed backward and Owen started beating him up. There was chaos in the hallway and soon, Mrs. Peters, the head of discipline, appeared from nowhere. Stop, what are you doing? She shouted. The other students managed to break them apart, but Owen was raging as I had never seen before. He attacked me. Him and Geo, he screamed, come with me. Owen and Geo, how could you attack another student? And Owen, why did you punch your brother? Everyone was confused because only I and Owen were in trouble. Because they are dating. Owen, I always knew you were a loser. 
but I cannot believe that you would touch him. It should be illegal. He laughed. You want to know what's illegal? Sleeping with Mrs. Peters. I spat out his secret. Everyone gasped and Mrs. Peters turned pale. They tried to take us to the office, but another teacher had heard. By the time our parents were called, Mrs. Peters was nowhere to be found and Andrew was being questioned. He got away with bullying others because he was having an affair with a teacher who was just over 10 years older than him. The three of us received a suspension while my claims were investigated. Mrs. Peters had been sleeping with him for over a year now and thus giving the bully special treatment. From what I heard, she was fired, and a case was filed against her. I could not get hold of Owen for days and I was worried. The entire town was buzzing with news of the scandal, and I knew that he was most likely in trouble with his parents. His brother knew when I mentioned the affair that he was the one who snitched on me. I got a message from an unknown number several days later. Unknown, I am in trouble. They know that I told you the secret, and my father is upset because I am dating a guy. I do not know what to do. If they force us to separate, then please know that I love you a lot. Me, look, if they do anything to you, I will go to the cops. Owen, my father is so close to becoming the mayor, he will not let you get away with it. Me, please get out of there. You can stay at my place. My parents know everything, and they are worried about you. I did not get a response from him which got me sick to my stomach with worry. I hoped that he would be okay. Just when I was about to fall asleep that night, I heard my mother calling me. I quickly rushed outside and saw Owen, looking like he had just been through hell. I instantly rushed into his arms, unable to stop the sobs. It was surreal. Everything had blown up in just a matter of hours. I was shocked when he looked into my eyes and his eye was swollen. After we got him clean clothes and something to eat, he told us everything. His parents had been very angry, and they took away all this technology. They were planning to send him away to some unknown location. He ran away, but not before getting the proof against his father. He had a file filled with all the illegal stuff his dad did over the years that he wanted to hand over to the police for so many years. But he was scared. He was now tired of hiding those dirty secrets and wanted to expose them. Are you sure, my love? I asked. I would be just as bad as them if I kept on protecting them. He said with determination. Gosh, I love you and I am so sorry for just blurting everything out. I am the reason we are in this mess. I held his hands. No, my parents are. He said, Owen, would you like to get some rest? My mother asked. So, he rested in the guest room, because my parents knew we were dating. The next morning, he handed everything over to the police and sent a copy to the newspapers. The pressure from the media and residents because of his family's illegal dealings led to his mom and dad being arrested. They both got 15 years in jail for money laundering, fraud, and corruption. His brother went to stay with his grandparents and my parents were allowed to be Owen's legal guardians. The plan was to stay with them until graduation, then move out together. He had gotten a scholarship for computer science because he was very smart, and I was going to study chemistry the following year. In front of my eyes, the shadows underneath his eyes faded and he became less scared of people. My parents adored him, and he helped around the house while our relationship only became stronger. By the time we were off to college, he was a part of the family. He cried a lot on the day that we had to go. You are even more emotional than me, I teased, hugging him close to me. For the first time in my life, I know what it is like to feel loved. Your family has shown me what a healthy family is like. He said, you will always be part of our family, son. My father ruffled his hair and we all laughed. My parents got into the car and we were left waving them off. And I looked at the face I loved the most in the world and smiled. I was truly happy and now we would start our lives again without all the toxicity of high school. Well, we have to unpack now. I tugged him back to our off-campus apartment. There were so many twists. It is such a relief that Gio and Owen have finally gotten peace. Would you expose someone bad even if you were related to them by blood? If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and as always stay wholesome. Summary Gio meets a shy but intelligent guy on his first day at a new high school. He is confused when later, he sees the same guy, but he turns out to be a bully. It is later clarified to him that the bully is Andrew, and the nerdy nice guy is his twin, Owen. Gio becomes best friends with Owen, who is the only person who is kind to him, while he experiences homophobia and bullying from Andrew. He falls in love with Owen, who is still in the closet so their relationship remains a secret. Owen's life is not that perfect either as he is in a toxic home. He tells all the secrets to Gio, who comforts him. He also entrusts him with a secret that has the potential to ruin Andrew's life. Because of a misunderstanding, Andrew starts beating up Gio at school, 
Owen defends him, thus exposing their relationship. Geo then reveals Andrew's secret. Tired of keeping his family's dark secrets, Owen exposes everything and goes to stay with Geo and his parents. They then go to college together and rent an apartment, where they are finally free from Owen's family. The end. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become a part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.